for that. Let's talk a bit about the global picture. Uh, the big talking point, the highlight, was what came out of the fair. Prashant has analyzed it, and he's going to tell us what the implications are. Prashant? Um, you know, uh, who cares about the Fed, right? <laughs> because uh, the, the markets kind of just shrugged it off. Uh, and uh, the reaction has been uh, startling. We've seen this kind of price action before. But uh, this is not going away. You know, it'll, it'll uh, come back tomorrow. It'll be a factor when we analyze markets in the coming days, weeks, months as well. And what, what this graphic basically tells you is uh, what the market expectation of the Fed funds rate uh, and how that has moved. Uh, th this is Fed funds rate and where it is likely to peak, what we describe as the terminal rate. Uh, how much will the Fed hike to ultimately uh, before it pauses or before rates start to drop, right? And this is all the way from January of this year to today, to today. Now look at this. Uh, in January of 2022, uh, market expected that the peak Fed funds rate, you basically will need maybe two rate hikes of 50 basis points and you'll be done. Uh, look at what happened, where we were in April. Uh, it's two and a half percent was the expectation of where the peak rate is going to be. By this time, you know, the FOMC, the Fed had started to say uh, that we need to do a lot more. This also is a graph which shows you the disbelief uh, that the market has had that the Fed's not going to go all the way. You know, this is not Paul Walker 2.0, as many are now saying perhaps it is. Uh, look at what the expectation was in June, 3 percent, 3 percent and done. Uh, a pause or maybe cut or whatever. Last week, that was, uh, you know, 5 odd percent or so, under 5 percent actually, and post the rate uh, hike, uh, you know, the Fed funds expected, expe uh, sort of peak rate, the terminal rate has moved up to 5.5 percent. This yellow line, by the way, is nothing but uh, the actual Fed funds rate. We're at 4.75 percent, and after yesterday's decision and the hawkish talk by, you know, the Fed chair, the uh, expectation is that this will, this 4.75 will go up to 5.5, another 75 basis points before, uh, you know, they kind of stop and maybe keep that, keep the rate there for some time uh, to come. So this is, uh, I think, uh, a pretty startling kind of graph which shows you uh, the gap between what the Fed kept, kept saying it will do and the market kind of saying, well, probably not. Let me just quickly read out uh, just one portion from uh, Fed Chair Powell's comment, uh, which basically highlights that according to him, uh, the, the risk of not tightening enough uh, is far higher, the damage it can do, uh, than to over-tighten. So it's, in a way, what he's saying is it's better to over-tighten. And this is what he said, as I, and I quote, if we were to over-tighten, we could then use our tools strongly to support the economy, whereas if we don't get inflation under control because we don't tighten enough, now we are in a situation where inflation is now entrenched and the employment costs in particular will be much higher potentially. So I think this is as clear as they come. We were expecting that the Jackson Hole eight-minute speech is as strong and clear as uh, any. But I think uh, last night, uh, it was pretty clear too. Back to you, Reema. Thank you very much uh, for that. You know, I think one of the reasons why the Fed fund rate kept rising is because look at the way Powell's language changed.